Hello, welcome back to my kitchen and we're going to make traditional Christmas pudding. Yay, Yay. My, little, <laughs> my little helper in her funny beanie hat. <laughs> uh, now don't worry, normally you would make Christmas pudding like a month in advance or even longer and keep it, but if you're just getting around to it now last minute, it's no problem at all. So we're gonna start with some dried fruit. So in this basin, we have got 250 grams of lovely juicy raisins. Okay, so my lovely, into that, do you want to add the currants? So these Which are the, 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 the little black ones. Okay. okay, so that's 140 grams of those. And then 80 grams of sultanas, so that's those. Then we're also going to use about 80 grams of mixed peel. So that all goes in there like that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to soak it. I'm just checking the recipe. The recipe's online, by the way, the link's just below. And we're going to soak this in alcohol, basically, so all the fruit absorbs it and plumps up. So if you want to just give that maybe just a little bit of a stir. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use three different things here. I'm going to use a bit of Guinness, dark stout, because that's going to give it that real lovely kind of dark, treacly flavour. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use a bit of uh, cooking brandy, don't have to use the most expensive kind, and then a bit of sherry. I've actually got here some slow sherry that we made years ago, but we've used that up. Mm -hmm. So let me just check the quantities. So we're going to use, how much is in this can? It looks like 500. It is 440, so that's, that's gonna be roughly half. Is this gonna be safe to open or is it gonna explode everywhere? Yes, it not. <laughs> we have had a few exploding <laughs> accidents in our time. Okay, so I'm gonna use about half of that. I want to keep kind of stirring that in. Mm -hmm. Now, again, in an ideal world, you would soak this overnight so the fruit has time to absorb all the liquid and plump up. But to be honest, if you don't get round to it, it doesn't matter. Um, and then in terms of brandy, I am going to use two generous tablespoons of brandy. So that is one, two, don't have to be super precise. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same again with sherry. And again, if you haven't got brandy or sherry, you could just use just brandy or just sherry, or you could use something like ginger wine, you know, anything really. You could use a liqueur if you wanted, if you've got a favorite one. I know some people use like amaretto to make a, mm -hmm. I know you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. To make it an almondy flavored one. So how is that doing? Is that all mixing up? So I think the thing to do is you keep mixing that and trying to get some of the mm. liquid absorbed. It smells really good. It smells it really Christmassy. And of course, it's so nice to do this with other members of the family if you can, because then you make a wish once it's all mixed yes. together. So think about your wish that you might like to do. Right, now, while you're doing that, I'm going to mix together the dried ingredients. So I'm going to use a separate bowl and I'm going to use the flour. And the flour I am using is just an organic plain flour, 170 grams. So that's going to go into here. If you were gluten-free, you could use a gluten-free flour, that's no problem. Uh, you could even add a bit of soy flour in it if you wanted to add to its protein content. And then I am going to add the sugar and the suet. Now the sugar I'm using is dark brown muscovado sugar, which is, thank you, super helpful. Like my, <laughs> my kitchen elf. Uh, so this is 55 grams of soft dark sugar. It's not a huge amount of sugar. You know, the fruit's really sweet on its own, so you don't need masses of sugar. And again, it's all about getting that darkness, that richness, that treacliness. So using dark brown sugar, using the Guinness or the dark ale or the stout is just going to help to add to that, that Christmas richness and that slight spiciness. We're also going to use a lot of spices, by the way. So that has the sugar and the flour. Then I'm going to add the suet and I've got 110 grams. Thank you so much. <laughs> of beef suet, but you could use vegetarian suet if you wanted. That's no problem. I'm going to stir that all in. Is that beginning mm. to absorb a bit? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Good. So yeah. you just keep stirring that all up while I do this bit. And then I think it's possibly time for the eggs. Let's just have a look. Flour, sugar, suet, chopped almonds and mixed spice. Now, chopped almonds, I love almonds. And almonds, of course, give a really nice bit of protein. And I use almonds that have the peel on, so they have their skins on, because that's actually giving you a little bit more fibre. So it's a little bit of prebiotic goodness in there. And I just roughly chopped them. I quite like nice large chunks of almonds in my Christmas pudding. So, you know, I keep them quite roughly chopped. They're like, you know, into halves or quarters. 
just again, it gives a bit of texture into your pudding. So that's going to go into my flour mixture. Keep mixing, sorry. <laughs> just trying to get as much of that juice absorbed in there as we can. Uh, and the mixed spice, and I'm going to use about 20 grams of mixed spice. So that's almost half a jar, if you're using it from the jar. I'm trying to take the lid off. It'd be quicker really, wouldn't it? Mm. Let's just pop this in there. So these mixed spices, they tend to be a mix of ginger and cloves and nutmeg. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, mm -hmm. absolutely. Thanks for reminding me. Um, we've got a bit of orange peel in here as well and a bit of dill seed. Delicious. Mm. Great. So that's going to go in there like that. So I will be mixing this, you'll be mixing that, and then of course we'll mix them all together to make the pudding. What about the eggs? The and the eggs, yep, yeah, you're quite right. So we've got a couple of our farm eggs here. Can you smell that spice? Mm. It's really coming up, isn't it? Oh yeah. Really good. It smells like Christmas in here. It does. So I'm going to crack two eggs and beat those together. So this is going to provide part of the liquid along with the milk. Again, if you wanted a lactose-free version, I've got a fork somewhere. Yes. Oh, thanks, Lily. Um, you could use, you know, soy milk or almond milk or something like that if you didn't want to use real milk. So I've got eggs, and let's just see when we add that. So I am now going to add the milk bit by bit. Uh, until it's smooth and then the dried fruit is the last thing okay so you carry on with that yeah. I'm going to add in the eggs the beaten eggs and then I'm going to add in gradually add in the milk just a mm. bit at a time and then you can adjust it if you find that actually you need a little bit more it depends what kind of flour you're using you just want to get it into a nice kind of cake mixture, rich cake mixture. Why do you add it a bit at a time? Well, because then you can see exactly how much you need. Like if this had already mixed together, I'd think, well, maybe I need a little bit less. Um, or if I end up you know, needing a bit more. It's always easier to add than take away the cake ingredients. Yes. It's always easier just to keep going slowly and add. A bit like making up your face, you know. It's always easier <laughs> to add, harder to take away. I think this is mm. probably going to need all of it actually. It's really releasing those spicy flavours. It looks really good. It does, doesn't it? Mm. Right, what I'm going to do now, I think, is if you can carry on mixing this one, because I know yeah. I need to prep the pudding bowl. So maybe just, I tip in the rest of that to be mm. honest and just incorporate it. Do you see how it's kind of absorbing it in the flour? Yeah. So let me grab a pudding bowl. And you want a pudding bowl that's one litre, really. And so that's about this size. And I'm going to grease it. So I might just grab a little bit of butter to grease my pudding bowl. And the easiest way is you could use a butter wrapper if you wanted to. Always just take a little bit of room temperature butter and just grease the inside of the bowl, like this. Mm. So that's all nicely prepped. Yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, see if you can incorporate that, stir all the mixture really well in together. So my basin is all prepped and ready. Now, for the main mixing, we need to mix both bowls together. Okay, so we need to- It's gonna fit. <laughs> I think, it, I think it will do. I think it will do. Let's add, maybe add this mixture to that one. So let's just scoop. Are you to drain it or anything? No, because that's all the lovely juiciness. Mm. Yeah, we're going to mix that in. Good questions. Okay, so. Pop this in like this. And this is the stage, really, when we get mixing all together. And we get to make a wish. So, who else do we have? In the house, is there anybody else? Mm. No. The kitchen. They all gone out, they all left us. They might have left us. They've all left because they don't want to be part of it. Never mind, so it's <laughs> just us. So I'll, we'll have extra potent wishes. Mm. So we get this all mixed together. Look at this. Okay, right, I'll have a moment's silence, please, while I make my wish. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish. Mm. 
quite runny. It is, but it'll cook. You know, it'll be nice and moist because we're going to steam it. It takes a long time to cook, slow steaming, where, where you kind of boil it in a saucepan of water. Mm. Great, so I have made my wish. Do you want to make your wish? Yes. Let me just check here on the cooking time. So we're going to put it into a well-buttered pudding bowl and we are going to seal it with a lid of greaseproof paper or a butter wrapper. Um, and then we're going to put it into a large saucepan of water and we're going to boil it for six hours. Six hours. Wow. So we've just about got time before bedtime to pop it on. Gosh, it is long. It is a long time. <laughs> so let's see, should we mm. pop that into there? Mm. Might actually be a little bit left over as well. I don't know. I was thinking sometimes if you get a little bit left over, you can make a mini one, <laughs> which is quite nice. There we go. So that is absolutely perfect mm. amount into there. Right, now I need to make the lid, so I will just get some greaseproof paper. Do you know how to make a circle out of greaseproof paper? Oh, so it's a folding technique, isn't it's it? It's a folding technique, I yes. Can't so let me grab some scissors. Right, so this is what you need to do. So we're going to cut. start off with a square. So measure it kind of over there so you can see the approximate diameter. And then you take your paper and you fold it in half and in half again and in half again. So you're turning it into little, a little triangle like this. Okay, so you've got all your triangles folded together. Then you measure it from the centre out so you can see roughly where you're going to need it to come to. Yeah, mm -hmm. So about here. And then you just snip along there. And when mm. you unfold it, you have a perfectly sized mm. circle. So that can just go in there like that. Just, oops, I've got butter on my fingers. Just take it down around the edges like that. Mm. And then I'm going to get a basin, or a saucepan rather, of water and stand it in there so you put the water in like so yeah well i think it's kind of easier really otherwise the water might go everywhere mm. so you just then put a load of boiling water in here so i might just get um maybe the easiest thing is to use a teapot perhaps or a, a jug there we go or a coffee jug and i mean you don't have to use boiling water you could just use cold water and bring it to the boil, that would be fine. Could you grab me a saucepan with sweetheart from that? Um... So fill, you want it to be about half full so it's going to cook and keep an eye out because what will happen is the water will boil away and you don't want it to boil dry. Right size? Nope, that's too big. Right. <laughs> There might be one with a clear lid, possibly. Oh, the clear lid is quite good because then you can see what's happening. You can check on the water. Oh, it goes over the bowl. Well, it should go over the whole thing, really. Oh, so that's let's. Too small. No, that might be fine. Ah, that will be fine. So we'll just put that in, just make sure that the edges. We're just going to have to make a note to keep an eye on it so it doesn't boil mm. dry. It's like poaching it. It is, exactly. Poaching exactly. it. Steaming it, and then after the six hours, that will have cooked, and then you can keep it. Then you can wrap it up. You could wrap it up mm. in um, aluminium foil, tin foil, keep it somewhere nice and cool. And then on Christmas Day, you're just going to reheat it in a container of water like this. You probably need it to cook it for another hour or so just to cook it through. So let's pop it on the um, on the hob. And can you remember, mm. can you maybe set a timer or something every hour on your phone? Every hour, yeah. Well, then we can just check it to make sure it doesn't boil dry. Mm. And then um, then it will be cooked through, ready for Christmas Day. Yum. Thank you for your help. Mm. <laughs>